new methodology of integrated PBSD and PBWD. For tall buildings in urban region. Outline. Introduction. Design philosophy. Substantial connections between seismic and wind design. New methodology for design of tall buildings. Summary. Design of buildings in the sites, with high risk for both wind and seismic hazards, is more challenging. Vulnerability of short and tall buildings to these loads is different. In general, excluding the local impact of wind loads such as imposing damage on the attachment of roof. Shorter buildings more sensitive to seismic load. Taller buildings more sensitive to wind load. Earthquake action on the building. Dynamic force. Induced inertial forces in structural members. Wind flow action on the building. Aerodynamic force, mean and background component of wind load. Direct action of wind pressure on the building. Dynamic force, resonant component of wind load. Induced inertial forces in structural members, similar to seismic load. An essential difference between resonant wind load and seismic load. Wind load has larger energy at lower frequencies. Seismic load has larger energy at higher frequencies. Seismic design. Inelastic behavior. For extreme load to dissipate energy. Performance-based seismic design, PBSD. Well-developed. Wind design. Elastic behavior. For both level of serviceability and strength. Performance-based wind design, PBWD. Under development. For tall buildings. Wind load is large and can be even larger than seismic load. It can result in excessive strength and stiffness of fuse element. Such as beams, coupling beams, and braces. Precluding energy dissipation of fuse elements under extreme seismic loads. This would eventually result in a brittle system. Example shear failure of joints and vertical members. Induced dynamic force, resonant load, for tall buildings is large. Especially for a crosswind and torsional wind loads. It is a considerable potential to reduce resonant load through allowance of inelastic behavior. By allowance of inelastic behavior to reduce induced dynamic forces. The result would be a more logical and economical design. It is a key for developing a more resilient performance-based wind design, PBWD. New methodology for the design of tall buildings based on integrated PBSD and PBWD. Performance levels. Based on the level of damage in structural and non-structural elements, or both. O. Operational, no damage in both structural and non-structural elements. I. O. Immediate occupancy, initial yielding. L. S. Life safety, plastic mechanism starts to progress. C. P. Collapse prevention, strength degradation. Seismic design. DBE, Design Basis Earthquake, LS. MCE, Maximum Considered Earthquake, CP. Wind Design. Service Load, Serviceability Design, O. Ultimate Load, Strength Design, IO. Seismic and Wind Performance Ranges. For an Idealized System. Elastic Wind Design and Inelastic Seismic Design. Entire Ductility of Structure is allocated for seismic design. Wind and seismic hazards are independent. Low natural frequency, larger wind load. High natural frequency, larger seismic load. Stiffness is controlled by serviceability limit. Yield strength is controlled by strength limit. In current practice, elastic wind design and inelastic seismic design. Structural response under wind and seismic loads should be calculated individually. Buildings are designed for the maximum value, not both at the same time. This approach can be interpreted as in the following scenarios. Scenario 1. Extreme expected wind. Elastic behavior. No structural damage, IO. Ready for next hazard, wind or earthquake. 
with full structural capacity, strength, ductility, etc. Scenario 2. Extreme expected earthquake. Large inelastic deformation. Serious structural damage, LS CP. Loss of most of structural capacity. Substantial retrofit or rehabilitation. Required to withstand future hazards. Consideration toward seismic hazard is dominant in this current approach. The current practice. For short and mid-rise buildings with large seismic demand, very effective. For tall buildings with large wind demand, controversial. For tall building, all components of wind load are large, mean, background, and resonant. Resonant force can be even larger than the other components, across and torsional wind loads. It can be reduced through allowance of inelastic deformation, similar to inelastic seismic design. Mean and background loads are direct forces and cannot be reduced by this approach. The idea of inelastic deformation may not be practical, if the resonant force is small, short and mid-rise buildings. Large inelastic deformation should not be allowed. Damage accumulation. Due to presence of mean load, especially for a long wind load. Low cyclic fatigue failure. Due to long duration of wind event, usually one hour or longer. Earthquake event is usually less than one minute and low cyclic fatigue is not a serious concern. Tall buildings are always designed for seismic load. The structure already has a reliable ductility. Small portion of the ductility capacity can be allocated for wind design. Structural performance levels, SPL, based on ASCE 41 to 17. Enhanced. Safety. Desirable range for. Inelastic wind design. ASCE 2019, pre-standard for performance-based wind design. Proposed continuous occupancy performance level for inelastic behavior under extreme wind load. Which is quite similar to ESDC performance level. Elastic wind design. Inelastic wind design. With small plastic deformation. Proposed scenario based on inelastic wind design and inelastic seismic design. By considering small portion of ductility for wind design. Scenario 1, proposed. Extreme expected wind. Exhausting some inelastic capacity. Small structural damage. Between IO and ESDC. Ready for next hazard, wind or earthquake. Just small portion of structural capacity is lost. With basic retrofit the structural capacity. Can be almost recovered, if it is necessary. Scenario 2 proposed. Extreme expected earthquake. Large inelastic deformation. But not that allocated for wind. Serious structural damage, LS CP. Loss of most of structural capacity. Substantial retrofit or rehabilitation. Required to withstand future hazards. Consideration for seismic hazard is dominant again. Structural capacity is allocated more fairly for both hazards. Results in more rational and economical design. Current wind design is based on elastic behavior, while seismic design is based on inelastic behavior. The corresponding criteria for IO level of structural performance for PBSD and elastic PBWD are tied together through yield strength. Large portion of wind action on tall buildings is due to induced dynamic vibration, and could be reduced through appropriate energy dissipation mechanism. Allowing small inelastic behavior in the wind design of tall buildings for strength results in changing the current scenario. The wind demand can be reduced significantly and makes PBWD more flexible due to new level of structural performance. It makes the design more resilient and economical for sequential wind and seismic hazards. The proposed scenario provides more flexible framework for integrated performance-based wind and seismic design. Thank you for your attention.